Today's Spontaneous Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace. You should. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome from me to you. To where we are now, together, we did it. We're finally on the same page, figuratively speaking. Not literally, we're not standing on a book. What if we were? That's how it started in Nazi Germany. First, they rounded up all the books. Then just to be jerks, they stood on them. Hey, that's my book, somebody cried in German. Yeah, I know, the Nazis replied as one. Hitler got them to do all their talking at the same time. (sighs) You know what? I'm glad those guys lost the war. (laughs) Now, if you stand on a book... It's because you want to. It's to show our dominance over stories. You know, since the days of the cavemen and women, stories had a power, power over all of us. Somebody drew a mammoth hunt on the wall of a cave. Scratch, 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 scratch. I like to imagine that that, first of all, the the first cave painting came out of sheer frustration because one guy's trying to tell a story and the other dum-dums are like, what? Wait, where were you? And where was the mammoth? And like right before that first cave painting, if you were there, you would have heard the word, here! Guy drawn it out. Oh! Do you think that the cavemen were like, but your body is just a stick and then your legs are too sick? I'm sorry I haven't been to art school. I can't draw a whole beautiful, perfect body. What about the hands? Hands are the hardest. Everyone knows that. Well, we don't all know this yet, but guess what? I'm the first guy to draw and I'm here to tell you. Hands are fucking hard. Pretty good mammoth, though, right, guys? Yes. They had to to admit it. (laughs) What is keeping those mammoth clones, by the way? I thought we were all going to be eating mammoths by now. (laughs) This is bullshit. I really wanted to try it. (laughs) I want it would have been okay. I wanted to see a mammoth. Not in the zoo, because I think zoos are cruel. I do want them to clone one so I can eat it. (laughs) But they can make a bunch of them and just have like a herd of them running around. You could see them from afar. I imagine you would not want to get too close. The idea of an elephant with hair on it. (laughs) What a beautiful dream. How about a rhinoceros with bangs? (laughs) Like long enough, like a fringe long enough that it's like just the horns poking through, right? Like a beautiful shag haircut on a rhino. Republican in name only? No. Let's not get political, guys. Got a long election ahead of us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest on. Have a... uh, a special chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell this person where babies come from <laughs> and why her parents are getting divorced. Uh, <laughs> then later on, I invite some improviser pals on and we improvise a narrative story, one continuous story. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's how he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so I have wanted this person to be on the show 
since the very beginning. I am thrilled that she is here now. You have seen her on the FX situation comedy Married. Oh, you've also seen her in literally everything else. I just saw her in a movie called Grandma the other night. I didn't even know she was in it. And then there she is. Also my friend Lauren Tom. That's another story. But she was wearing, what an amazing onesie. <laughs> her name goes Judy Greer. Woo-hoo. Judy, welcome to the show. <laughs> what a pleasure it is to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad you brought up the onesie. <laughs> It was crazy. It was like almost like a, a constellation sort of pattern. I know. I think I kept it. And then we did reshoots, and then I had to bring it back, and I wore it for like one minute. And then I was like, I think you guys should take this. <laughs> Wait, so first you liked it, and you said, I want to hold on to this, this crazy yeah. apparel. And then when you got back <laughs> into it, you're like, you know what? No. No. And then when I saw the movie and I saw my butt in it, <laughs> which I didn't look at when I tried it on, I was like, You didn't oh. do a 360? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they had magic mirrors at my fitting or something. I know there were a lot of boxes everywhere. At the fitting. <laughs> yeah, at the fitting. So I could see myself getting distracted. Was it boxes with mirrors drawn on them? <laughs> no. <laughs> But I think they were somehow obstructing my view (laughs) into the mirror I was to be looking at. I thought you looked adorable in that crazy thing. Thank you. Judy, I have a question for you. I'm going to answer it. Okay. Thank you for (laughs) agreeing to my terms. (laughs) (laughs) This question from our previous episode's guest goes like this. What's a good New Year's resolution? Oh, um, I like now it doesn't have to be a resolution you have made uh, or have failed to keep. Just what is a good New Year's resolution? To wear more skirts. <laughs> now, is this a resolution that is dear to your heart? Yes. <laughs> I make it a lot. I made it specifically one year. It was to wear more skirts, but it it also meant dresses too. Mm-hmm. So. That was a good one, and I felt like I did accomplish it. You felt like you did accomplish it? Yeah. For a year? For yeah. longer? Um, probably not quite a year, but I got well into some. Like, I got to summer, in which case then I'm, like, always. So then I'm like, eh, whatever. But, like, after. Like, because in summer I wear dresses all the time. Why did you feel that it had to be a resolution, that you had to sort of make yourself adhere to this idea? Well, I love change and I love self self improvement. Mm-hmm. So I make resolutions every single year, and this one felt like one I could actually accomplish because um, it was because oftentimes I don't. It was accomplish. a very low impact resolution. Yeah, and it was a yeah. I wanted like to set myself up to succeed, right? Not fail. And then my husband and I often will make resolutions for each other. Oh. That is some dangerous Dangerous. territory. (laughs) Oh, my God. I know. (laughs) But it started when I went to my friend's house and I was peeing in her bathroom and there was like a list. (laughs) I was only peeing in the bathroom, by the way. Not that I wouldn't have done the other thing, but I didn't have to at the time. And I was looking at the list and there was two sets of resolutions, one for him and one for her. Wait, in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Where in the bathroom? Like by the mirror, because they didn't want people to see them. So they go in every day to brush their teeth or whatever, and then they have to look at that goddamn list. Yeah. And I was like, I came out of the bathroom, I was like, so, Travis, are you getting better at putting your records away when you're done listening? (laughs) This was a man and wife, not a husband, not a a mother and son? Okay. Man and wife. (laughs) Um, And he was like, what? Huh? And it was really funny because then I'm thinking like, yeah, I think they thought that no one was going to read them. They didn't want like people coming over, but like they only at the time had the one bathroom. Mm-hmm. So if you have anyone over and you serve them any beverages. Sooner or later. They're going to have to go in there. Do you remember any of his resolutions for her? No, she's perfect. I don't even know. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but no, I don't remember. I don't remember. There was like. There's always they, they stop nagging me about them. my records. <laughs> 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 oh. 
<laughs> One year, I think mine was to drive more carefully. But I didn't, I don't even think I did it for like a day. Do you? F- <laughs> you didn't <laughs> like, drive carefully for a day. Like I was like. Oh, Are you a very distracted it. driver? Yes. Really? Uber's everything. Isn't it the greatest? It's pretty great. Like, yeah. I got caught once just Ubering around during the day, like not even for drinking purposes. Just because you didn't like, feel like driving. Well, I didn't want to drive. I had to drive all the way to the west side, and my mm-hmm. audition was like at 4 p.m. Why do they do that? Now, this I hope this will, will not be completely unrelatable to people oh, yeah. listening. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, but there's, there, man, oh, man, when these people. <laughs> it's nine miles. It <sighs> takes an hour and a half. Anything that's in Santa Monica is like, no. go fuck yourself. I kind of like want to just get a hotel room and like make a night of it. Yeah. Like, because it's always at rush hour. It's always <laughs> scheduled at rush hour. You like, if you're on the west side of Los Angeles and you have to be there around 5 p.m., like, don't make a dinner reservation on the east side until 8. It's never happening. Word to the wise flyovers. So there you go. That's um, some real talk here in Hollywood, <laughs> California. Have you ever been in a a car accident because of your uncareful driving? All of my accidents have been because of my uncareful driving. They've all been your fault? Yes. How many accidents are we we talking about? I have rear-ended like five people. Oh, no. Five? (laughs) Yeah. It's a lot of (laughs) rear-ending. Well, actually, not all my accidents because one time my husband crashed into my car in the driveway. (laughs) He was, and yeah, so he crashed both of our cars. <laughs> <laughs> I did that to my wife. I backed up yeah. without looking yep. and hit the front of her car. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't bad. Like I, I, right. I bent her license plate. Right. But it was, it was terrifying. Yeah. It was a, it was a jolt. I was, so I parked like behind his, he was in the garage and I parked like off to the side and I was like, I'm off to the side. Do you want me to move it to the street? He's like, no, it'll be fine. I'll just like (laughs) maneuver around it. I was like, great. So me and him and his son got in the car and then we buckled up and he just like bowled and was boom. (laughs) I was like, we we literally (laughs) just had this conversation. (laughs) Like I was like, do you want me to move my car? And you said, no. And then he just smashed, (laughs) smashed into it. <laughs> I screamed so loud. I was like, shit! And I was like, is everyone okay? And they were like, we're fine. It wasn't that big of a deal. How bad was Was there like, was like, damage? No. Yeah, a little bit, but nothing major. <laughs> <laughs> were you, did you get an accident when you first got your license? Mm, I got it in one accident before I got my license. And then I didn't get in any accidents. And then when I moved here, I got in a lot of accidents. <laughs> because... I didn't know where to go, and mm-hmm. it's and this was like before before anything. GPS. I had a Thomas guy Thomas guy in my lap. That was for for the listeners, for because oh, yeah. I know there's a lot of young people. This was a book it that you a, had to have in your a car. Giant spiral notebook. My yeah. first agent gave it to me wrapped as a present when I moved here. <laughs> That's very thoughtful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a book, and you, it's sort of like a it's like a treasure map where you have like a whole long index in the back with code numbers, and you go in the back and you look up the codes, and then it takes you to the page of the map, and it's, it was a magical adventure. Every I, audition, I remember looking at a Thomas Brothers guide for the first time, and I almost passed out trying to figure it out. Like you didn't it, even drive then. No, I didn't. I didn't, but I ha- I still I bought a Thomas Brothers guy because I thought I'm going to learn to drive one day and I'll need this. Yeah. And so I had it in my home for years Forever. and years and years. I might still have it. Actually, I have mine in my car because I'm like, when the shit hits the fan, That's right. I'm going to find my way out of the city. The grid's going down. <laughs> How is it up to date? No. <laughs> How old is it? Oh, it's so, I mean, it's the first one. I think actually it's my second one. I think I had to replace it once because like the one page that you, like the one whatever Fox where you're like, oh, I must have auditioned a lot at Fox because that page is ripped out of the spiral. (laughs) To put on the seat next to you? Yes. Or like it just, I've been turned into it so many times, like it ripped out. And so I like fold it and put it in. But then finally I just replaced. Does the cover of this this edition of the Thomas Guide have a 19 on it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you might need a new one. Yes, it does. <laughs> do you think they still make? They must still make them, right? I wonder. I bet they do. There are some things though that they stopped making eventually because the technology just rendered them useless. Boy, I wish I had an example. What that about would really an, make an encyclopedia? Great. Do they still make encyclopedias? The encyclopedia is a perfect example. Thank you. They have stopped uh, publishing encyclopedias. The, the full set of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. We had one. 
growing up. We did too. Yeah, it was the nice. It was the black one. Oh, I don't. I'm oh, not familiar. It had a red thing on the back. <laughs> it was a really fancy one. How yeah, many volumes do you remember? I had them all. And you- oh. <laughs> <laughs> How many, how many did that total? <laughs> well, I think they <laughs> Oh, we had most of them. Yeah, all the letters were there. Well, I don't know. There was like, there's the one, they combine a couple of the letters, like. Exactly. You know, like X A to and C y. Or, or X and Y. We had a, it was a lot of books though. And then there's some, once a year, you get like the correction book or something. I feel like we got like an update. Oh yeah. Book, did I you think. use them for school reports and things like that? I did actually. Yeah. Did you, did you ever plagiarize? Yes. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> yeah. What? Are you still doing reports? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I totally plagiarized. Yes. I feel I feel like I got very good at paraphrasing. One girlfriend of mine was, I was like a sophomore and she was a junior and we had different English teachers, but we had to write the same paper for our class Hmm. and we handed in the same exact paper. Like we worked on it together. That's a bold gambit. It was a terrible idea. We never got found out, but I still, it weighs on me. It weighs on you that it was wrong or that you think about how you could have gotten busted? Yeah, that I could have gotten (laughs) busted. That would have been terrible. Imagine applying to colleges with that on your record. <laughs> How would I have ever become an actor? You went to college, yes? Uh-huh. Did you go for drama? Acting, because I also did comedy. <laughs> the, <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, I was, yeah. Yes, I was thinking the umbrella term of the uh, dramatic arts. I did study the dramatic arts. <laughs> yes. Do you have a degree? I do. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Do you have that framed? I don't know where it is, but I know I have it because I never got it when I graduated because I didn't return the library books that I had checked That's out. That's right. I yeah. the story. Yeah. So I never got my diploma or degree or whatever it's called. So then I like got invited to a fake fundraiser. It was a real fundraiser, but it was like a fake event that yeah. anyway, whatever. And the dean of the school presented me with my degree. It's the least he could do. It really or is. she. He. He. But thank you for saying that. Because they're coming around begging for money. Yeah. That never so. stops, right? It doesn't. Even my high school. Really? Yeah. Did you go yeah. to private high school? I went to Bishop McDevitt High School in Wincote, Pennsylvania. Fancy. It was a Catholic school. Sure. And they would still send me. They would, If my parents were alive, I'm sure I would still be getting those letters today. Yeah. My mother would save them for me. Send them to you? <laughs> yep. Oh, my yeah. God. She'd wait till like 10 were piled up, and then she'd send them to me. And well, I waste the stamp, you know. <laughs> exactly. That's crazy. I went to public school. They don't ask for anything. <laughs> they don't ask me for anything. Well, they just ask us, the taxpayers. Yeah, that's true. Um, look, we don't have time to get into that, but yeah. I have a lot of thoughts about taxes. it. Taxes. <laughs> I had to talk about taxes today to my accountant. Ugh. It's scary, right? I don't like it. It's the worst, but best when you think of how good that they can do. For the community. How should I feel about this? My accountant wrote to me recently, uh, and we don't talk a lot. I just send him, you know, checks and receipts and things like that. Yes. And pray to God that he is not embezzling from me. That's all you can do. (laughs) Yeah. It's just the only reason (laughs) to believe in Jesus or God. Exactly. Or whatever. That he might come (laughs) May. Yeah. Someone like a government official is not going to show up at my door with handcuffs. Do you know this man, woman? (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. So he sends me an email saying... Hey, it's been a while. Uh, we should get together to catch up. Ooh, catch up? I don't like that. I don't like it at all. No. What, we don't. We don't catch up. Wait. So this you haven't caught up yet? Not yet. He just sent me this email. Like get together in person? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I got excited because across the street from my accountant's office, they just opened this really cute nail spa. Mm-hmm. So I said. Next time we have to get together, let's get our nails done. So I'm excited for that. Now you, I'm looking forward to it. You can talk about your finances over. Yeah, a, a but I really petty. I like my. I, I probably will just do our feet so that we can eat salads out of to-go containers and talk about my money. You would eat the food as your feet are being worked on. You don't do that. 
I well, not in a while. Multitasking. <laughs> That feels like food should not be in such a place. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, but they have food everywhere. There's altars <laughs> covered in food. Altars? So, yeah, and what? they're always microwaving food in the back. <laughs> always. So, that, yes. Someone I'm else is getting, backing this up. Yes. they. <laughs> off, all, all, I'm going to go 99.9% of the time. Someone's in the back eating something that smells delicious. <laughs> What they really should do is like a combo pack of like get your lunch and get your nails done. But aren't they like taking a, a pumice stone to the balls of your feet and stuff yes. like that? Yes. And there's they somebody's are. eating a burrito. They put this gel on your foot that burns off your calluses <gasps> and they like soak your feet in this Bernie gel. Stop, I'm okay. getting hungry. Sorry. <laughs> and while it's happening, I'm eating a salad. <laughs> a salad from Air One or Whole Foods. Oh, or the bl- Coral Tree Cafe, depending. Oh, nice shout out for the Coral Tree Cafe. Sure. Judy Greer. <laughs> Here we go. We are in, I'm going to say we're in February as people are listening to this. Oh, let me just, uh, I wonder let me just what my life check. will be like in February. <laughs> Isn't it fun to think about? You know, I just got some big news about 10 minutes ago and <laughs> it's changing my whole spring. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Things have really opened up for me. Sure. Well, it's, <laughs> it's February 22nd. What are you? What are you? What are your springtime plans? Oh man, I don't even know. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to have abs. Like I want to be sure. able to see my abs. Absolutely. You got that February. wearing skirts thing sorted out. The skirts. Time are, to move on to abs. Skirts are going to be happening. Um, abs. Let's see. February, spring. Well, um, I was going to do a big renovation to my house. <laughs> so. <laughs> but maybe that's I, on hold. I don't know. Everything's so fresh right now. Uh, <laughs> I am really in the moment. <laughs> I mean, everything's so different than it was a half an hour ago. <laughs> well, Judy, I, I feel like you have a renewed sense of spirit. <laughs> I do. And it's probably best to let you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You are Miss Judy Greer online. People I, can find I you am, on Twitter. and S.S. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> M-I-S-S. Assuming I'm still even on Twitter in February. I, I think you're still allowed I'm to be gonna, on Twitter. I'm going to stay on it. Yeah, stay on it. I'm stay good. on it. See what happens. It might lead to something great. Okay. It hasn't yet, but <laughs> hope springs a turn. I uh, got a picture drawn of me once that someone tweeted. So that was <laughs> awesome. Whoever you were, thank you for putting me in bell bottoms. They are very flattering. <laughs> More flattering than a Constellation onesie. Uh, We're going to take a break. During the break, I will ask Judy Greer to provide us with a location for our improv. And then when we come back, you will meet our improvisers. All of this and nothing else. When Spontanea Nation returns. Have you ever gone on to a friend's website and the coding's just no good? I mean, the you can't read the hyperlinks. The fonts are all messed up. And you can't even find where you should refresh. Uh, Okay, look, hi. My name's Cal Solomon. I was briefly a member of the seminal late 1970s rap group, the Sugar Hill Gang. I was fired because I wasn't good at rapping, and I'm still not. But I thought I should make my own website, just in case the nostalgia craze hits and people are like, Hey, let's get a... What's his name in there? (laughs) I forgot my name already. Listen, here's the point. I use Squarespace. It's very easy to make your own website with Squarespace. Because, look, I know all about coding, but it's still hard to do. Uh, Making something that looks good and works well is a time-consuming affair. And when I'm trying to do my business, or let's say if I want to put up my rap portfolio, or I want to open a rap-themed restaurant, or whatever else rap-themed I want to do... In this day and age, I'm going to need a website. Well, lucky for me, Squarespace makes it easy to build powerful, beautiful websites. <laughs> I say powerful. They don't say it. I don't know why. I guess I feel like the power of the World Wide Web is a pretty amazing thing. And you can do it all without ba- breaking a, ba- baking, baking a cookie or uh, breaking a sweat, the kind you would make baking a cookie. If your oven's too hot, your kitchen's too small. Oh, almost a wrap. Squarespace provides simple, powerful, and beautiful websites that look professionally designed, ooh, regardless of skill level, and there's no coding required. And listen, not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy-to-use tools to create your website, 
the Squarespace also has state-of-the-art technology. I mean, back in the day, that's a rap term, when we were doing our raps uh, before I was fired and they, the, the gang released the first single, um, the technology was very primitive. Did you know Rapper's Delight was recorded into tin cans with string? But now Squarespace has state-of-the-art technology powering your site to ensure security and stability, the kind of stability that you have when you don't get fired from a rap group, but you go on to become a huge success. And you know you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs with millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust in them too. Brands like the Sugar Mountain Ensemble. That's my, that's my new rap group. I hope you'll join it. I'm seriously, right? this is an open call for membership. Listen, you can't beat the ease and simplicity of Squarespace. They give you 24-7 online support, 24-7, that's like a rap term, and beautiful and a beautiful website to boot. So what are you waiting for? Start a trial with no credit card required. Start building your website today. And when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code PFT to get 10% off your first purchase, and then you show your support of this show, Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. So here's what you do. You're helping out a show. You're getting a great website. You're sort of helping me out and my rap ensemble, the Sugar Hill, the Sugar Mountain. What is it again? The Sugar Mountain Ensemble? That's right. You could be a member of it. Get on the ground floor. Go to my Squarespace website, and you'll see how to follow the directions to submit your tape. We thank Squarespace for the support of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. Thank you to the Sugar Hill Gang for getting, getting, getting me my start in the late 70s. And thank you for listening. <laughs> hippie, hippie to the hop, Squarespace, you should. Don't stop. <laughs> Have you ever heard an ad that you wanted to give a hug? <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, ladies and gentlemen. None of us went anywhere and neither did you. Okay, now that that's out there, <laughs> let's continue in that cards on the table spirit. And I'm going to tell you, I got some people here that are going to get introduced by me. This guy sitting right smack dab next to me. He's wearing a shirt that I like. I compliment him on it every time I see him. <laughs> it's a good shirt. It's got sailboats on it. Do you like to sail? I've only been... No. <laughs> the one time I went sailing, it was a disaster. That one traumatic time. It was bad. He is a real landlubber. His name is Mark McConville. Hello. <laughs> Mark, tell me about your sailing journey. What happened? I was at Boy Scout camp, Ugh. and I took small boat sailing merit badge, mm -hmm. and we got stuck. I mean, we were just in a lake. We did <laughs> In a lake? I don't know how we got out to where we got out. Oh, I've gone twice, and it happened both times. I went sailing in the ocean once, too, and we sort of got to a point where it's like, okay, we have to turn around. Well, the wind only blows one way. Do you <laughs> at a time. Yeah. What about a nor'easter? I feel like that would be a disaster in a <laughs> sailboat. We eventually took the, the the rudder out of the bottom of the boat because it's a tiny little two-person sailboat sure. and just used it as a paddle oh. and took turns paddling back to shore. That sounds <laughs> like a disaster. In, in Florida, in the ocean, I think it was shallow enough that one of us could get out and push. <laughs> so this is both with the Boy Scouts, both times. Do you worry that you're a Jonah? I'm going to get eaten by a whale. Well, that you're bad luck on a boat. No, I've been on other boats, and it's been great. Mm, so you say. I got real close to Niagara Falls in a boat. How close? Pretty close. You're not supposed to get close to it. Well, however close you can get on the Maiden of the Mist. <laughs> oh, well, that's just you sitting on a boat. Yeah. You're not on the crew. No, no, no. I'm not these working. Are the, uh, these are the two times you've crewed a boat. Is that correct? Correct. Mm, wow. Well, stand by yeah. my Jonah theory. Yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> Well, listen, if you get eaten by a whale, make sure you build a fire. That'll make him sneeze. I will, and then you can have this shirt. <laughs> Please bequeath it to me. Will do. Mark, I'm done talking to you. <laughs> now I'm looking across the table, not directly across, a little side eye. Not in the mean way, but she's literally to the side. She is looking over her microphone at me as if she's trying to find me in a crowd. <laughs> She is my colleague from the Thrilling Adventure Hour. Mark is my colleague from the Super Ego. <laughs> Gotta cover all my podcasts. <laughs> She's also the host of her own podcast, which someday is going to be out. Maybe it'll be out by this recording. Oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> called The Baby is Sleeping, which she co-hosts with her husband, Fred Cross. Mm -hmm. Her name? It's not Fred Cross. 
It's different. That's how you can tell them apart. <laughs> Her name is Annie Savage. Yay! Annie, welcome back to Spontaneity Nation. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. How have you been? <sighs> I am exhausted. Really? Baby, baby, baby. But baby, how old is she now? What? What? We're in February. Yes. <laughs> so she's. <laughs> I don't How know. old is she at the time of this recording? The time of the recording, she's about to be 15 months. Mm, getting, She's heading into the terrible twos. She's pretty terrible right now. <laughs> is she? Wa- she's walking around. She's walking like crazy. She's talking. She's babbling. The bit, like last time I checked with you, she was going like that, 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 that kind she's of thing. She's still kind of doing that. She's a she's an observer. Mm-hmm. She really likes to sit back, but I did ask her the other She's day. She's forbidden to interfere. <laughs> I asked her the other day, what uh, what does a monkey say? And she goes, hoo, 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 hoo. And I was like, yeah. And then I go, what does a cow say? And she goes, hoo, hoo. Oh, no. I was like, oh, Millie. Oh, no. Millie, no. No, you're grounded. Are you afraid she saw a cow monkey? That would be my first she thought. She might have seen a cow monkey. She might have been. You know, oh, you guys live on the island of Dr. Moreau, right? Yes. <laughs> But rent is getting ridiculous. What? That was one of the selling points of that place. <laughs> I know. Now everybody <laughs> wants to move there. <laughs> well, you know, my wife and I divide our time equally between uh, <laughs> Los Angeles and the island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> Look into it. Annie, we'll be back to pick you up a little later. Bye. <laughs> See you directly across from me. For the first time ever. For the first time ever. You mixed up the seats. I felt like you... You thought I didn't want you to sit next to me. I did feel that way. What is wrong with you? <laughs> we had a very negative experience together last time. <laughs> Paul was hungry and I got yelled at. What? No, as I was that I was hungry. I was hungry. We were starving. But we were under a time and crunch. And also we were on a time crunch. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And you were chatting with our guest. Only a little though. And I was tapping you on the shoulder and you were refusing to acknowledge. <laughs> well, probably two taps. <laughs> Hey, two taps is enough to get my attention. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but that that is, I hope, water under the bridge. It is. We're it fine is. now. I was trying to mix it up. Mix it up. <laughs> mix up the energy. You are quite a specimen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we missed you at the Hubba ha- Hubba. We missed you at the haunted hayride last night. I know. <laughs> oh, but it's February, so it was a Valentine's hayride. That's right, the traditional Valentine's Day ride, where the ghouls can touch you and you can touch them. I heard it was mildly disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I hate that. I love that thing. It was for folks here in Los Angeles. Every year at Griffith Park, they do the uh, haunted uh, Hollywood Hay Ride, and it's, you get on the, the, a flat bed that is towed by a tractor. Um, and while you are uh, breathing in uh, heavy diesel fumes. Um, <laughs> People in crazy costumes, they rush out at you and and they enact little playlets and they bang on the side of the flatbed. And it's a lot of fun. And it's usually very elaborate. And this year, somebody new is in charge. I don't know. But it sucked. I'm so sorry to hear that. That bums me out. I love Halloween. I love a spooktacular. Yeah. But this this year, we went through the maze for the first time. Oh. And the maze is all all strobe lights, and there's no warning whatsoever (laughs) to anyone. So it's a stroke machine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, but it, Seizure machine. What if you are epileptic and you go on this thing? Well, do you know what I mean? We'll find you when there's, we turn all the lights on. There's no warning at the morning. yeah. There's no warning at the box <laughs> office. There's no warning before you go in. It's insane. That's awful. It's all strobe lights and people dressed as clowns. Not cool. Not cool, guys. Anyway, Jessica Chaffin. That's. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I can't hear myself. I don't know if that matters. It only matters uh, to you. So that you can participate in the proceedings. Is everything plugged in the way oh, it's I supposed hear, to be? Oh, I hear my own voice plenty. There we go. What? <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> yeah, okay. I can actually hear yeah. Guys, I'm sorry you had to hear that. That's a little bit of family business <laughs> that we try to keep private. <laughs> the sausage is made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have, guys, we have our location from Judy Greer. We're about to begin our story. Audience, guess what? I got something to tell you. When we tell our story, we use sound effects to move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene, and then we want to cut to something that's happening at the exact same time somewhere else. You will hear this cut to sound effect. We're over there now, see? Simple. Let's say we want to go backwards in time. Somebody's having a memory. We'll use this flashback sound effect. There. (laughs) Let's say we want to go forward in time. 
Back to the present or into the future. You'll hear this flash. <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> You'll hear this. Heaven fell off the piano momentarily. <laughs> you know, he's like a one inch tall person who runs up and down the keys. That's how he plays. <laughs> anyway, future flash forward. There you go. Everyone gets it. All right. Now it is time to reveal the location provided us by Judy Greer. And that location is Laundromat. <laughs> laundromat. We take you now to Laundromat. Excuse me, do you have, uh, the change machine isn't working. Do you have, can I give you a dollar for some quarters? Oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to, uh, to do that. My boss isn't here right now. Um, what is it you need? I need, I need quarters for the machine. I don't have any change on me. I just, I, the change machine usually works. Oh, I'm just, I'm just here to make sure no one uses the bathroom. That's kind of my only job. Uh, oh, Okay, the one that says for customers only. Yeah. Okay. Um. You can't. You can't. Am use I? A that. Cu- I. You're a cu- Well, you're you're not a customer unless you put money in the machine, and until you put money in the machine, you're not, I'm not a customer. I'm not a customer. Okay. Yeah, so. I understand. Um, is there anybody else here that I could? I don't think so. I mean, we made a resolution that we were always going to have somebody here to be. Uh, available to help the customers, but uh, haven't followed through. Haven't followed through. But it's you know it's only February, so uh, we still got time to get our act together. Okay, well, um, I mean that's unfortunate for me. I have like five loads of laundry. Right, right, right. right. Um, I, I, I tell you what. Hmm. Why don't we just walk outside? Just go through the front door, okay. and then you can ask me just as a person. And not as an employee. It's sort of like oh. I'm taking off my badge, kind of. Oh, oh, I appreciate that so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So just, all right. Just get right out here. Push through the door. Mm-hmm. All right, and let me. Uh, I'll just act like a regular person, okay? Oh, <laughs> okay. How long has this laundromat been here? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> this used to be a library. Excuse me. Huh? Hi. Yeah. Hello. Me, Hi, sir. I'm a person. Hi, yes, person. Um, I have this dollar, and I need some quarters. Do you have any quarters on you? Oh, let me just check. No. What the fuck? Uh, hey. I. You just said inside, you said that you made it sound like you had quarters on you. I did not. I don't think I made it sound like that. I, I made it sound like I couldn't help you inside the store as an em, inside the, the laundromat as an employee. Well, you can't help me outside no, as a I person. Don't have, I don't have the quarters. I'm sorry. Well, this was a waste of time. Excuse me. Oh. I'm sorry. You're arguing very loudly. Oh, I'm so sorry. And my baby's sorry. trying to sleep in sorry. the back of my store. What? But, what? Uh, the uh, store right here? Yes, that's right. What are you selling? Bricks there? and thicks. Bricks and thicks? Yeah. And what do you sell? Brick a brack. And where's the thicks come from? Um, we also sell these incredible hair vitamins. <laughs> are you in the market? Well, no. As you can see, I'm. Uh, anyway. I, I, <laughs> I didn't come up here letter. out here to do a sales pitch. I came out here because my baby is trying to sleep, and you two are arguing very loudly. I, I apologize. This, um, when this was a library, this sort of thing never happened. Right. Is, there a, is there a fight going on out here? Uh oh. Um, I'm trying to do nails and barbecue some brisket at the same time. <laughs> Trevor, there is a fight happening out here, and as part of the Block Association, I'd love it if you'd step in. Okay. I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm new. I just started working in the laundromat. My name is Dave, oh, and you're laundromat. Trevor, I take it? That's right. And, Do you remember and, and, how great this neighborhood was before the laundromat? I just finished reading this book on how to clean up all the junk in your house by some Japanese lady. Oh, sure. And I checked it out from this library. Yeah. I love this library. I hope it never goes anywhere. It's amazing. And it just makes this whole place feel like a small town. And I just feel like it's our kind of people. Do you know what I mean, Trevor? I do know what you mean. Your hair is so thick. Oh, it's the horse pills. Oh. Uh, hello, Trevor. Hello, Veronica. How are things? Are you enjoying are your you library Garth? books? 
I'm very well, thank you. But is there you any? You look great. Well, thank you. You know, I'm not getting any younger, so it's always nice to hear. Still that. dressing as a train conductor. Yes, I am. Well, I feel like I conduct a train of reading here at the library. Oh, isn't that cute? Shh. Gar- oh, I'm, so I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you got me, young lady. That's a good one. Oh. Can I help you find a book? Oh, um, yeah. I'm looking for. This one on tidying. Tidying around the house. Here it is, right here. Yes. Trevor just returned it. Isn't that nice? Oh, my goodness. Thank you. You got to throw all your shit away. (laughs) And I plan to. Look at an old button and say, I'm never going to use this. It doesn't spark joy. Throw it in the trash. Where does the trash go? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, does I anyone it. else have guilt about throwing out, the, throwing things out because where does the trash go? Would you like to read a book on where the trash goes? Oh, Garth, sure I, I just one. knew you were going to offer up a book on it. <laughs> Everyone loves the library and me. Yeah, I heard about that guy. I, I'm sorry I never met him. What happened to him? Hit by a train. Oh, <laughs> Hit by a train? That's right. <laughs> on the way to his birthday party. Yeah. Why was he crossing the train well, tracks? he was conducting a ghost train, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> what did you say? He was conducting a ghost train? A ghost train. He was cool. out there, conducted a ghost train. <laughs> oh, the board. Yes, there we go. Yes, you get on, you lost, poor lost soul. And how about you? Do you have a ticket? No, but I have unfinished business on Earth. Well, then that's good enough for me. Get on the train. Uh, hello, passenger, fellow passenger on the well, hello train. <laughs> May I help well, you? my husband and I got on this train in Chicago, and then he got off, or I threw him off. I don't remember which. Was well, this a math problem? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been riding these rails here for quite some time. Well, I hung myself in the bathroom. Oh dear, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> well, it was one way to get out of a. It was either that or jail. So I said, "Let me take care of this." I take your point. Well, welcome aboard the ghost train. Thank you. Now, just so you know, the uh, the ghost train is uh, it's not physically uh, solid. So uh, we're going to be on these tracks, and uh, another train might just pass right through us. But that's very unlikely. Fine by me. I'm not solid either. Are you okay with that, murderer? Oh well, murderess. Murderess. Yeah. I do beg your pardon. I, I try to be modern. Oh, you're cute. You're very cute. <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh, it's my birthday. Hey, what's that light over there? Wow, that's uh, that's a pretty sad story. It was all downhill from there, wasn't it? It was because he was, it turned out, really bankrolling the whole library too, and it was, you know, <laughs> the, the city wasn't. No, it was for- a, it was a private, a private library, library, like John wow. Paul Morgan. It was a private library. Wow. Excuse me, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Did you need something, darling? I need quarters. Does anybody have? Oh, I'll run a nail salon, girl. We don't do. We have, we don't no, quarter. No just, one ever pays in change. It's gauche. It's considered gauche. All right, I'm. I'm just gonna take my stuff to another laundromat. Well, but please don't do that. I, I'll get blamed. <laughs> you know, I work on commission. <laughs> <laughs> the more people who use the machines, I get a bonus at the end of the day. You seem nice, so I think what we should do is maybe try to help you out, get you some quarters. I can't give them to you. We don't have any. Uh, Veronica, do you have any quarters? Come on, there must be some old coins in that pile of bric-a-brac you got in there. And thick a thack. Mm, let me see. I'll be I'll be right back. So I didn't mean to interrupt. You obviously have a lot of history here. I gotta go inside and turn my brisket over. It smells delicious, by the Thank way. Thank you. It's making me very hungry. The foot smell is actually taking my appetite away. Yeah. It's very strong foot smell. It's well, the burning. Yeah. That's the new thing they do. They burn your your feet. They just hold a some sort of hot wax. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, you, you're, you're, you're speaking very loudly. You're disturbing my baby. Were I, we d- I did that find. Loud? We were I did find our- a jar filled with change. If you want to root around in it and see if you can find enough quarters to do. Whatever it is you need to do, oh, then that's fine with me. That is amazing. How much is the uh, jar of change? Well, no, you would four quarters equal a dollar. And oh, okay. Many so quarters just, you find. Oh, you want the whole jar? I was. I oh, thought I you were selling the whole, me the whole jar. The whole oh. the jar is fifty dollars. Huh. I wonder how much is actually 
in there. Well, take Did it you or ca- leave have it. Have you counted it? <laughs> take it or leave it. I don't know. What do you think? I- you got all this laundry. Nobody You're wants to me? go home. I- <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to put dirty laundry back into a car. Nobody That's does. That's for sure. No. Well, um, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, on the one hand, you might get more than $50. And on the other hand. No, she won't. You, you might. <laughs> on the other hand, you won't. So. Is it worth $50 to you to get your laundry done? Opportunity cost. You know, at this point, yeah, it is. I really have to get Great. my laundry done. So here, let me get, I have, you know, here we go. $50. I'll tell you what, give me 48 Uh, Okay. Okay. Great. Um, Do you have change for five? I love to negotiate. I get a charge out of it. <laughs> Even when I lose. <laughs> But she's it's still less than fifty dollars. Yeah, you know for sure she's she's getting less than fifty dollars. So forty eight. I mean, you're still it's, probably coming out ahead. These could be all wooden nickels for all I know. Who knows? Do you have a key? The door when we left, the door locked. Oh uh, no, I they didn't give me a key. I, I, you know, it's it's my first day. God, who's running this place? Oh, well, my my boss, obviously, and he's not here. He went on a break, but I don't I don't know where he went. <laughs> this brisket is delicious. Isn't it just what I do is I put it on early in the morning and just slowly turn it. Yeah. Is it, it's paleo or uh Of course it's paleo, it's meat. Yeah, and there's just meat and maple syrup and uh, honey and, I, and a magician rocks. never reveals his secrets. <laughs> Trevor, I have enjoyed spending time with you. And your nails look good. They do. We used to call them talons when I first came in here. Remember that? You said, I do remember What am that. I going to do with these talons? <laughs> what am I going to do with these talons? <laughs> <laughs> lad, lad, you're not at the laundromat. Why would I be? I knew you were. I knew you were taking these long lunches. Look, I'm the owner. I come and go as I please. And when I what please is me is a pulled pork sandwich that gets started about 7.30 in the morning, right next to a big giant tub of formaldehyde. And then I just soak my toots and I eat me a sandwich. But I've offered to make you lunch and shave, and shave off your heels at home. Oh, no, I've seen behind the domestic curtain. <laughs> oh, isn't Trevor too much? <laughs> Hi, Trevor. Hello. Trevor's too much. Lad, you're too much. He's you're, lived a life. You're ruining our marriage. By grooming for you? <laughs> Is it for me? Hmm. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Trevor and oh, I are going to Hawaii. The brisket real good. Oh. What's she doing here? I mean, hello. Who's this lad? I'm Judith. <laughs> yes, and? And? I work for Trevor. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Trevor, is Judith an employee of yours? Um, sort of. Trevor, you're lying. I can't hide it. I'm an honest person. Lad, you're cheating on me with this Judith. Well, Judith and Trevor, technically. What? <laughs> yeah. What? It gets cuckoo brains up in here. <laughs> no wonder you're spending more time in your Slow house than mine. cooking. Oh, well, yeah, that was our arrangement. I have a private life where on the days you're not around, you don't know what happens. And then when you do arrive, I uh, pretend like I was just working. What terrible vows those were. So, yeah, I don't know when he's coming back. Um... <laughs> What should we do? Well, my laundry's in there, so I got to get in at some point. I mean, you know, break the glass. I don't know. Does anybody else, any other shopkeepers have a key? Where, what happened to Trevor? This woman is so helpless. I'm Trevor. sorry, everybody. I'm really sorry. Oh, I mean, can't we pick the lock? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does anybody know how? I mean, I know how to pick locks because I used to be a criminal. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, there's a whole story behind that, I'm sure. Well, I mean, you know, it's pretty cut and dry. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll just go ahead and pick the lock and uh, hope that we don't get caught by the police. We better not. Yeah. No. 
And if the president finds out we're stealing his documents, we're in serious trouble. Well, probably, I mean, probably even more people than the president. Like, before it even gets to the president. Like, even if it's, like, a, the night watchman at the White House. Keep it down, man. The press correspondent's dinner is going to hear us. <laughs> the, who's hosting it this year? I don't Tracy Morgan? <laughs> That's right, Mr. President! <laughs> You're crazy! He's funny. Keep picking the lock. He's not getting a lot of laughs. Hurry up! They know, the president always gets more laughs than the person. I don't know why they don't make the person go first to make the president go last. Well, they want the big laughs for the president, right? Hey. What are you doing in here? Uh, oh. Voting? Yeah, so that didn't work when I said I was voting. Did you ever pick the lock? I mean, you know how? Is that what you're saying? I was just about to. I was so close. And then we would have gotten those documents. Do you have any pick lock picking bric-a-brac that we could purchase? <sighs> if you'd stop screaming, you're going to wake up my baby. <laughs> I don't think anyone's screaming. I think Hold on. I'm let me just see. Very much hushing my tone. Uh, are you telling my baby it doesn't know no. what sound is? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? I'm not, I don't think I, she's telling your baby that. It feels a lot like sense. you're telling my baby how to be a baby. I don't even see your baby. You're actually being louder than us right now. Yeah. Well, this my baby's is... used to me in my in my voice. My voice doesn't disturb my baby. That's a good point. But when it hears a strange howl <laughs> coming from outside, it can't help but be disturbed. Can you help us or not? Can you help us pick Let me the lock? See if I have a hairpin. Hold on. She um she married. I can't imagine that she is. <laughs> just want to know what happened. To, like, where's the dad? I mean, she's yeah, miserable, isn't she? She seems like an unhappy person. Yeah, yeah right? In yeah, general. Yeah. In general, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. I found uh, some of those, uh, when you put a pen in your pocket and the pen has a metal thing and that's how you keep it in your pocket if people right. still did that. Yeah. That. The, will that the clip, work? The pen clip? Pen? Yeah, the clip. Okay. Let's try. Give that a shot. Let's see. You're going to need two, though. Yeah, I brought you two, because oh. you got to do one from the top and one from oh, the bottom. of course. Thank I'm you. told. Thank you. No, you're right. It's classic locksmithry. At least that's what my oh. husband told me, anyway. Uh, oh. Uh, your husband. Your husband. What is, do you know him? I don't. No. Do you, Trevor? Oh, hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> is the brisket ready, Trevor? Oh my gosh, there's something up that's cooking up in there that's a little more tasty than brisket, y'all. What's that? The laundromat owner's wife found out about me and my semi-employee boning him. <laughs> Wait, what? She confronted him in my nail salon, y'all. That's happening right now? Yeah, I went inside to check the brisket and all this shit went down. <laughs> wow. That's, this, this place is crazy. <laughs> I liked it so much better when there was a library was next not door. like this before the riffraff moved in with the laundromat. It's terrible. It's terrible. I should have stayed in jail. The laundromat, uh, <laughs> the laundromat owner's wife has the laundromat owner lad um, by knife point. What? She's threatening him. What? Oh, lad, this is it. This is it. You've, you've humiliated me for the last time. Have I? <laughs> I think that you have, yes. <laughs> Have I? <laughs> Don't try doing those funny voices with me. That's not gonna get that you. That usually this gets you. I that know, usually but gets not you. Not anymore. I've been. I've been. When wrong. I do my Betty Boop impersonation. Don't it even do it. You. Don't boop, you boop, do it, lad. Boop, boop, lad. Boop, boop, lad. Boop, boop, lad. Boop, 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 I'm serious. I'll slit your throat, lad. Uh oh. What's going on? <laughs> Things used to be so great when the when the library was there. Will. The will, will lad, the laundromat owner, be uh, d d d stabbed in the neck to death by his wife? Will they ever get back into the laundromat? What happened to Tracy Morgan? <laughs> we'll find out when Spontaneous Nation returns. Guys, 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 guys. It's me, Paul, from Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins, to be more specific. I want to tell you about Viceland. Oh, Paul, what's Viceland? Is it an amusement park where you have sex with prostitutes? No, that's just life, dude. 
Viceland has a new channel from Vice. Begins on February 29th. Okay? This is like, you know Vice, right? Imagine them having a whole TV channel. And this is what you get. They have these interesting shows. You got a show like Gaycation. All right? Gaycation I found to be a very interesting show. Yeah, I got to see these things already. Ellen Page and Ian Daniel, they go uh, around the world exploring different LGBTQ cultures, right? Japan, Brazil, America. They check out all the different uh, LGBTQ experiences and they talk to people and they get to know people's stories. Um, I found it very interesting, very moving. I like a thing that shrinks the world a little bit and you get to know more about different cultures. And guess what you find out? A lot of the time we're very much the same. So why are we fighting? Also, a show like Flophouse, I'm a comedian. This show is about comedians. And Lance Bangs, whom I've worked with many times, very talented uh, filmmaker, documentarian. Um, he interviews various comedians uh, who are like, you know, up and coming guys and where they are in their lives, like crashing on couches and being roommates and stuff like that. It's very interesting. It'll give you an insight into what comedians are like. It might confirm why you don't like them. It might turn your mind around you close-minded piece of other. So there you go. Check out Viceland. It's going to be interesting. If you like Vice and you trust them, trust this. It's going to be anything but dull. All right? Guys, check out the shows on Viceland. That's my ad vice to you. Get it? I'm reading an ad, and it's about Viceland. You owe it to yourself. Viceland. Now, it's a channel. Have you ever run out of podcasts to listen to, and you don't know what to do? I mean, you listen to Serial. You listen to Mark Maron. Now what should you do? Ooh, I rhymed do with dude. Not good. Hi, everybody. It's me, Cal Solomon again. You know, from the Sugar Hill Gang. Anyway, today's Spontaneous Nation is sponsored by Howl.fm. It's like Netflix for podcasts. With Howl Premium, you get exclusive access to brand new Howl original dramatic miniseries called Fruit. The series tells the story of an African-American professional football player who struggles with his sexuality. Oh, I'm not African-American and I didn't struggle with my sexuality, but I was a guy who was struggling to be in a rap group, and I lost my struggle. I was fired for not being good at rapping. It was very important to these guys that everyone in the group be good at rapping. At the time, that seemed a little stringent to me. Now I see it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, Fruit is written and directed by Issa Rae. She's best known as the creator of the critically acclaimed web series, The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. Speaking of awkward, it was awkward when I was in the Sugar Hill Gang and was no good at rapping. So awkward, I got fired. I feel like I've told my story a number of times now. First episode of Fruit debuted February, February 3rd. I think you're supposed to say February because of the R in there. I wish it wasn't in there. It confuses things. And I know what it's like to be confused. I was in the Sugar Hill Gang. It shouldn't have been. And a new episode premieres every Wednesday. You can hear this provocative drama only with Howl Premium, where you also get exclusive access to more than 120 hours of original miniseries and audio documentaries. And audio, docu audio documentaries is just like a movie documentary, but they take the movie away, the movie part, and they just leave the sound, um, including a show that I think Spontaneous Nation listeners will love because it stars your host, Paul F. Tompkins. It's called Forgotten Cla Super Ego's Forgotten Classics. Um, that's where these guys, uh, they take um, a famous work of literature and they get the title, they get the characters, and they get the first line and the last line, and then they improvise everything what they think it's about. That sounds like fun. Presumably everyone in the group is good at improvisation, and no one got kicked out before the first episode. Sound familiar? I've told my story several times. You Okay, also, here's a call to action. Uh, I want you to do this, okay? Promise me you'll do this. Before, you, before the sun sets tonight, promise me you'll do this. Get access to all this exclusive content 
on your iPhone, your Android phone, and on the web for only $4.99 a month. I mean, guys, that's a steal. You know what I mean? If I, I'm, I'm flat broke right now, but I'm going to do it because this stuff sounds like fun. With the promo code SPOT, you get a full month of free trial. Ooh, I wish I'd waited to read that because that sounds perfect for a guy like me who's a little down on his luck, but making a little extra cash uh, doing ads. To redeem your promo code, make sure you create your account on the web. Don't do it on your phone. Come on. At hal.fm, enter code SPOT at checkout, and you get that free trial, okay? Remember, to hear the new Hal original drama, Fruit, Along with dozens of original audio miniseries, go to howl.fm. That's H O W L, like a wolf going hello. Dot FM. And use the promo code SPOT for a one month free trial of Howl Premium. Howl Premium. Howl about it. <laughs> Do you think that'll catch on? That's for free. Hey, look, you can see in the window. He's got that knife right up to his neck. Oh my gosh. She's, what do we do? I don't know. She's She seems really upset. Nobody call the police. What? <laughs> that seems like the exact thing that we should do. No, You're you can't. Right. It'll ruin the neighborhood. You can't call the police because I've been running my business sort of under the table. And under the sirens the- will wake up my baby. You what? do not want to wake this baby up, y'all. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean you're running your business under the table? It's a, it's I ain't a... been paying taxes on this motherfucker. What? No. <gasps> Not on the brisket, anyway. I can't sell food and do nails at the same time. That's like double dipping or whatever. It's what you should com- do with my brisket, it's, y'all. It's also <laughs> completely against health department yeah, standards. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's yeah. kind of disgusting. It sounds yeah. bad. And yeah, you yeah. don't ever really want to smell rice when you're having your feet done. I sir- No offense, I, I also don't want to smell feet when I'm having my rice okay. put in me. Y'all are entitled <laughs> to your opinions. But I do good business in here. Just because I'm not up to sort of whatever business code. Good illegal business, you mean. Oh, you should talk, laundromat man. (gasps) I'm proud to say I'm a laundromat man after a year of being a criminal. What? I never knew that about you. I just judged you for what you do for a living. Yeah. Well, did you know that I used to be a lockpicker and one time I broke into the White House? No, I did not know that. That's fucking great. Well, to be perfectly candid, I was on a White House tour and I got lost and then me and my buddy decided we'd steal some documents and we got caught. Oh my goodness gracious. You never know what's right next door to you, do you, Veronica? This is why I've been complaining about this laundromat. We've got criminals in here. We've got... Locked doors. We've got women that don't know to bring quarters to a laundromat when they come to do laundry. Maybe the greatest crime of all. We've got a laundromat oh, without a change machine. I mean, we've got. Maybe she has a very good reason for not bringing quarters today. I feel like you two have gotten very close. Oh. All right, I got all my laundry. Do you need some quarters? <sighs> Do you have any quarters? I got tons and tons of quarters. Are you going to take some quarters for you go to the laundry, man? You know, I don't... I can't do this anymore. What? I'm trying to be helpful to you. I can't. I can't. I This... Don't you need any quarters for the This marriage man? is just killing me. What? But I thought we agreed that we we're going to live together forever and always be in law. I wish we just stayed in our separate houses and just broke up. I think that's very cold and cruel to live in separate houses when you're married to a person. What? I think it's very cruel and sad to live in a separate house when you're married to a person. You know what? Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, oh look. You woke our baby. <laughs> I need clean clothes tomorrow for my preschool exam. <laughs> for your oh, preschool I'm, exam? I have a desk tomorrow and I need clothes for it. All right. I'm, I, honey, I'm going to get... I have to go to the laundromat, but I'm not going to accept any quarters from your father. I don't know how you want to accept my quarters and I'm trying to help you. You should the really take that oh, as quarters. You know what? I'm. Goodbye. There were two of them? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get it? Your son is just like your husband. That's what you're just telling me. Just like him. Your husband and sounds like a real jerk. I hate him. <laughs> He's probably a really nice guy. He just sounds like he has an unfortunate delivery system. He sounds controlling to me. Like yeah, the really? way, yeah, the way he was offering those quarters. I get why you refuse them. Oh, you Thank mean you. just like take Thank them? Thank you. Can I help yeah, you out? Yeah, like an order, like take them, you know? Hmm. That's know. just what the whole marriage has been, you know? I Can you please stop complaining so loudly about your marriage? You're going to fix my baby. <laughs> well, how's your marriage? <laughs> yeah, how's your marriage? <laughs> 
Um, and then I guess if I had a husband, I would, um, uh, what? Honey, I'm gonna go to work now. Oh, uh, well, make sure you're <laughs> home to make dinner later. Oh, <laughs> you love the way I cook. Well, I love everything about you. Hey, could you keep it down over there, Veronica? You're gonna wake our baby. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem, Kip. Do you have a roommate all of a sudden? No, I was watching uh, Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds real dumb. Um, hey, what are you guys doing later? We're living our married life with our baby. Okay, well, I'll be quiet so I don't wake your baby. Yeah, good. You don't understand. Married life is important with a baby. I, th I wish I had a baby. I bet you do. Don't wake my baby, so keep it down. <laughs> Look, no one, really tell us, your baby has not woken up so far. Well, that's because I'm being a great mom, and I come out here and I tell people to keep it down. Okay, okay. all right. Um, you and know, when my husband gets home, he is going to be furious. What when he gets home? Here, but will you be here? Or will He's you be on a business home? trip right now. Oh. Okay. So home to this town. Okay, that seems like a minor crisis compared to what's going on in my nail salon, <laughs> oh, which yeah, is a potential murder. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Lad, I can't oh. wait. I can't wait to see all oh. that blood gushing oh. out of here. I'm you already bleeding neck. a little on the neck here, honey. Good, good. What do you? What do you? Let's negotiate. What are you unhappy about? I'm on. What am I unhappy about? You've humiliated me in front so of leave. all of this barbecue and feet. So leave. Where would I go? To my own home? Go to your mother's house. My mother. She, she'd love that. She'd love to say, I told you so. You never should have married Lad. So what if he's a laundromat baron? He's a, he's a cruel creep. It's just economics. <laughs> you, even now. Even now you're so cruel. With he, a knife to your throat. He who has the most gold wins. That's, that's what I know. Okay, y'all. Excuse me. Trevor, don't come any closer. I don't want you to commit a murder in here. I don't want to, but I, I mean, I want to, but I'm trying not to okay. because of jail. I've just been standing here the whole time. You Should shut up. You shut up. Judith, just stand there, okay? I don't want you getting hurt, Should darling. Should I call the police? No, do not. Don't you call the police. do not call the don't police. Don't you do that. Okay. Okay. Lad, talk to me right now. Just look right in my eyes. Uh, forget about that knife. Uh, forget about everything don't you that's going about on. This knife. Just don't talk you to forget me. about it. Uh, There's a nice lady outside. She needs quarters. Okay? Uh, okay. And she's locked out of your laundromat what? because of your substandard employee that you have over there. And I know he's new. But did you do he a background check on him? Uh mostly it's hard to find someone who just wants to sit around in a laundromat and answer people's questions incorrectly. Oh shoot, I could have done that while I was cooking meat and doing feet. Oh, well, let's get rid of <laughs> meat and feet. Let's get, let's just, you just put up a sign that says, go next door, talk to Trevor if you need change. I mean, how hard is it to do that? Well, then I'm triple dipping, y'all. Let's fire him. That's a good idea. Yeah. Hey, I still have a knife. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry. I can't that, believe you guys uh, are doing know, business stuff. Don't worry, Trevor. I can tell her wrist's getting tired. Oh, how dare you? How she has dare you? Weak lad. wrists. She's oh, always had un weak wrists. Unlike your little your little trollop on the your side. Little dainty She's not bird a wrists. I'll break them like porcelain. Come here, I want to flick them. Ooh. I got thick wrists. <laughs> She's <laughs> She's no trollop. She's the reason I'm a United States citizen. What? <laughs> okay, so, Judith, uh -huh. I love you. I, I love your toes! And I want to marry you so that I can become a U.S. citizen. That sounds so nice! I'm from Canada. <laughs> oh. So I need help to stay in the country. I'll help you out, but you gotta promise me one thing. What's that? That you'll go three ways with me and the owner of the place. Sure. Sounds sounds good. Yay! Hey, Trev, want to go to Timmy's? Yep. <laughs> oh, I see. I see how it is. All right, lad. I guess you win again. Oh, you're exhausting. <laughs> Oof, lad. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Even as I'm pulling a knife away from your throat, you're being you a know, jerk. This is the whole reason we got here. 
You're a pain in the ass. Oh, so it's my fault, is it? Oh, it's no. always a woman's fault if their husband's not happy. I'm switching to my other hand with the knife. <laughs> Did not oh, see that coming. That's right. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> She's ambidextrous. How do you even know what that means, you dim bulb? I'm not really dumb. I just sounds like it's whatever. Well, I'm sorry I judged you on your voice. That's unkind. And I'm sorry that Lady's being such a jerk. Did you... Did you even know easy, he was married? Easy, toots. I didn't. I thought he was just the owner. You were attracted to all that power. I love power. <laughs> it's my favorite. I do have uh, eight laundromats in the greater Phoenix area. <sighs> Stop, you turning me on. And two or three in Albuquerque. Oh, jeez. I can't help myself. I've op- opened a couple in San Luis Obispo next oh, year. Enough, enough. I'm so sick of hearing so... about the laundromat empire. Okay. So, are you going to murder him or what? It feels like no. Don't you rush me, Trevor. How no, Trevor, you? let's just go. What? Where are you two going? <laughs> what? I'm holding a knife still. You can't just walk well, away from me. stay here. How dare you? <laughs> wow, looks nuts in there. What's going on? Oh, they're coming out. They're just walking away they're from wa- her. She's just she's shaking holding the knife. knife. She just yeah. exhausts me. She exhausts oh. me. Oh, oh. Ma- uh, ma- uh, lad, uh, Mr. Hey, what's your name again? Uh, Dave. It's Dave. Oh, Dave. He looked oh like, hello, looked Dave. Like Dave. Dave, uh, sure. you're fired. What? what? That's right. What? We came out to fire you, even though I don't have the authority to do so. Lad does. Why am I fired? Because... What the frig is going on out here? Yeah, what the frig indeed. A lot of loitering and not a lot of laundry. Well, you left the store. I was the only one there. This lady wanted quarters. I'm not authorized to give her quarters. I'm only there. It's supposed to tell people that they can't, can't use the bathroom. The money. You can't touch the money. Exactly. So then we went outside, and I thought I could give her off-duty money, and then I found out I didn't have any quarters in my pocket, oh, and we got Oh, under the out. table business? Is that what you're doing, Dave? No, it was just- Because that's a- what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you're you're not accusing me of wrongdoing. It's like I'm just working your side of the street. Yes, yeah, stay in your lane. <laughs> I, look, I was just trying to give her quarters as one person or another, but I'm just fresh out of prison and I don't have any money. <sighs> this was my first day on the job. You're Please gonna, don't that fire all sounds him. Very reasonable. <laughs> that sounds very reasonable. Listen, but I'm not a reasonable man. Boy, you're really not, are you, lad? Look. My wife is in the business next door. She's got a hot idea about slitting my throat or some bullshit. I'd like you to do me a favor, Dave. What's that? I'd like, like you to go in there and just talk to her a little. Okay. Just sweet up to her a little. You want me to go in there and talk to her? <laughs> she won't listen to us. You don't want it? Maybe this nice lady here, woman to woman? Well, we, we could both go in. Okay. Why don't you both go in? That would be good. Just fresh perspective. Just take her off my hands. Just take her off my hands. You got it. There's a big. You take her off my hands. You can keep your job. All right, lad. I won't let you down. There's a Texas-sized plate of brisket in in it for you if you can get it done. All right. Does it smell like feed and chemicals? No, it smells like maple syrup from my home in Winnipeg. (laughs) All right. Listen, I don't even know your name. It's, Do you? It's, <laughs> I forgot. Um, it's April. April. Like the month. Yeah, of exactly. The year. Yeah. Okay. Like a couple months. April, you're ready to go into this situation where that woman's holding a knife? I guess I feel a little responsible for your your situation. It's so not I'm, your fault. I look, I <laughs> never should have wandered f- off the path of that tour, and I certainly shouldn't have picked any locks in the White House. All right. Well, let's just <laughs> see what we can do here. Okay. Oh. oh. Well, that- Wait, what was our plan again? We were going to go in there, we're gonna, see what we could do? We're going to go in there, too. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, hello, excuse me. Um, my name's Dave. This is April. Hello. Yes, I'm holding a knife. Oh, no, there's two more people here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Who are you? Oh, my name is Candy. It's not... It's Candy? It's... I. That's my popular name. Your popular name? What does that mean? That's what people call me. Her name is Judith. That's what I heard anyway. All right. You got me. <laughs> I'm Judith Candy of the Manhattan Candies. <laughs> what? I, why didn't you say so earlier? Because I didn't want you to think different of me. Well, I went to high school with one of the Manhattan Candies. We were a year apart and we had to do a report for English. <laughs> was it Was it my ma, Candy Candy? 
You're Candy Candy's daughter? That's me! Oh, she was my best girlfriend in high school. Oh, you're... What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <clears throat> did, we, did you ever say you might not have? <laughs> What's going on now? You're both out here together. Okay, uh, Judith Candy, and you, who I thought I was done with. Well, you're not done. And with now me. you two are BFFing it. You're not done with. Is that what's anymore. going on? Well, yes. Yes. I, I'd like to, I'd like to show something to Judith. This is the depth of his cruelty. What's my name, lad? <laughs> uh, Maureen? Wrong! <laughs> ah, jeez. Mary? No, colder! Mm, it's an M. It's not an M! Oh, is it an N? No, you're going the wrong way of the alphabet. Mm, Zandra. Beatrix, my name is Beatrix. Mm, that's a very memorable name. Thank you. I'm surprised you forgot it. Okay, why are we in here now? They're, they're we outside. didn't do anything. Yeah, what should we... They just kind of resolved that and left. Do you still need to do laundry? All my clothes are in there, so eventually oh. I have to get those, but... I don't know if there's any way to get back into the laundromat. I mean, that guy, has, he has a key, and then you've got the lockpick. Excuse me. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. <laughs> hey, who, who are who, you? Who are you? Me or... Oh, I used to live around here, but I don't anymore. That's very vague. It is very vague. Why Why are you being so vague? I'm just trying to be fun and mysterious. Anyway, I know a way to get into that laundromat that doesn't even involve the front door. Oh, how? Well, I'll show you. Look under the f look under the grill here in Trevor's barbecuery. There's a trap door. <gasps> oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Follow me. And then we come out right here in the laundromat, what used to my, be the great hall of the library. My clothes! There they are! Your clothes are right there! <laughs> wow! Thank you, mysterious stranger! Oh, don't thank me. Thank reading. What? Yeah, I don't... I don't why would I think... Why would we think reading? Is that a person? No, it's... You know, the concept of reading, it's... Uh, you, learn, you learn a lot of things from reading, and uh, it helps you all throughout your life. Yeah, but I don't know how that applies here. Did you... He read... Did you read the about the trapdoor somewhere? I suppose so. I read in a blueprint of the building that there was a trapdoor. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but a blueprint's pictures, so you could easily have just looked at pictures. Okay, yeah. So uh, you didn't need to read. Wait a minute, because this used to be a library. It did. It used to be a library, but no more. Cool, so I'm going to get my laundry. Yeah, why don't you do that? And okay. uh, I think I'm probably going to apply for another Should job. Should we just sneak think. out the same way we came in? Because they're still out there doing whatever they're... Yeah. I'm, you know what? Actually, there's a back door. Why don't we just go out the back and... Oh. Yeah. You know what? You can do laundry at my place. I got a washer dryer in the basement. Oh, my, my God. Bedroom. I would love that because I'm just, you know, left my husband and kid, so... Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to pass my test tomorrow. So I'm not crying because I'm going to help you pass your test. We're just going to plagiarize the encyclopedia. What am I going to wear? Ooh, um, oh, yeah, clothes. Hmm. I'll just poke holes in the trash bag and then you'll wear like a cool new outfit that all the kids will be jealous of. Awesome. Well, another, another story told. Close the book on this one, I suppose. Lad, the laundromat man, why, he just remained the same way he always was. A real jerk. Never any repercussions from it. <laughs> His wife, I don't know what became of her. I expect they're still married and living in separate homes. The high-voiced lady, whose last name is Candy. Why, she <laughs> got abducted by aliens. <laughs> no one ever found out. Trevor... Well, eventually, he was closed down by the Board of Health, and his accountant set up a meeting with him and punched him right in the face. And me? Well, I'm a... Oh, you heard what happened to Dave in uh, uh, April. They went to... They fell in love. They went to the apartment and uh, did laundry. And me? Well, I suppose I'm a ghost. I got hit by a real train. Or was I a real person who got hit by a ghost train? It was the first one. I'm dead. 
and I wander the earth with my unfinished business, getting <laughs> getting all up in people's lives and leading them through trap doors. Well, I'll see you in your dreams. Nightmares, really. I'm gonna scare you. I'm a ghost. All aboard! Oh, there's my train. See you in your own brain when you close your eyes. And it all happened in a place called Laundromat. <laughs> Mark McConville. Yes. Where do people find you online? What projects do you want to promote? Tell me everything. Let's promote opening night, the improvised musical. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Friday. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 hey. Opening, opening night, the night improvised musical. musical. <laughs> Will that song be in there? No. <laughs> Never? I don't think so. <laughs> that happens at the I.O. West. Correct, right here, here in, in Los Hollywood, Angeles. Hollywood, California. Uh, you, friend of the show, Shirley Cowan. That's right. And a bunch of other very talented people. Yes. Uh, you improvise a musical each and every Friday night. That's right. Impossible, you say? Well, it's, they do it. It's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. I can fun. go, I think I can go two whole lines of a made up song. And then it all falls apart after that. You should come on down. I get a, a rhyme, one rhyme in. <laughs> you should come on down and, and do a show with us. I'd like to come on down and see a show first. Sure, why don't you do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So right. I get completely intimidated. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, hopefully Pistol Shrimps Radio will be coming back. I think it should. Yeah. I yeah. So. I think just do it anyway. Even if, <laughs> even if the league is disbanded, just do it anyway. Right. I I feel like there's a sort of like secret... Um, there's a secret passageway to not doing it anymore, which is Amanda stops liking basketball. Like the only reason we did it was because Amanda, Matt's girlfriend, right, wanted, right. wanted. So to, he would go watch the games, and it's like, yeah, why not do it was this? Just like this novel idea that we had. But and then uh, she's been out this she as of this not, recording. She hasn't played a single game in this season. Correct. I think she'll yeah. play this week. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's funny to me to think we would be calling games for pretty much strangers. I think you guys could watch old NBA games. Uh, and and just call those. I'll think about I'd it. I'd still listen to it. You would? Yeah, I would. Mark McConville on Twitter. Tell him how great he is, everybody, because he is. Annie Savage. Hi. You are Annie underscore Savage on I Twitter. Sure am. Um, any other web stuff that people should know about? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Check iTunes for Annie's podcast. Maybe it's there. Dear God, I hope so. <laughs> That's why we do it, because it's impossible to find the time to even talk to each other. Jessica Chaffin, of course, had to leave during the final ghost monologue. <laughs> but I would like to tell you about Rana and Beverly, her podcast and live show. Uh, Rana and Beverly's podcast that she does with Jamie Denbo right here on Earwolf. Uh, it is hilarious. One of my favorite shows. It's the best. And they do it live, I think, on a monthly basis at UCB, Franklin. Um, and it is wonderful to see live. She is she's not very active on social media, but look for her anyway. Jessica Chaffin. It's fun to write out the name Jessica Chaffin, if nothing else. Ebbage Schletter, EbbageSchletter.com, Ebbage Schletter on Twitter. Go online. Seek out Ebbage Schletter's work. He not only has albums, but also he's got a podcast called Ebbage Schletter's Fantastical Musicorium. That's still up there. Uh, even though there's there's old episodes, you can still download them, listen to them, and you should uh, check out all of Ebbage's stuff because Ebbage Schletter is only the best. For me, no, you shut up. Thursdays at 10 p.m. on Fusion. I don't have Fusion. I know you don't, you weirdo. So that's why you can watch it on Hulu or Apple TV or a YouTube or Fusion.net. We've put it everywhere we can think of. Guys, just watch it. Whoo! No, uh, uh, Spontaneous Nation Live happens Saturdays, the first Saturday of every month at Largo at the Coronet. These shows are always, these shows live are always fun. <laughs> So buy a ticket and come on out and see it. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting us. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti. Thanks once again to Viceland for sponsoring today's Spontanea Nation. Viceland is a new TV channel from Vice that begins February 29th. Get ready for compelling programs like... 
Noisy, the people and places that make the sound. Zach Goldbaum takes us around the world to explore the artists and communities in the most compelling and sometimes controversial music scenes. Created by longtime Vice filmmaker Andy Capper. Weedicate, a weed show like no other. In an age of radical transformation for the culture of marijuana, Vice correspondent Krishna Andovalu explores these heady times by meeting the people whose lives hang in the balance of our new pot paradigm. And many, many more. Viceland, February 29th. Hi, I'm Devin Faraci. And I'm Amy Nicholson. Hey, Devin, what makes a film worthy of being called one of the all-time greats? Well, I guess you could consider artistic merit or cultural importance or whether the main character's a blonde, if we're talking to you. Or maybe a bearded Italian guy. I mean, don't make this about me. Well, on every single episode of our show, The Canon, we discuss, debate, argue, and sometimes harmoniously agree on which films deserve to be in the canon. We debate, but we leave it up to you, the listener, to decide which films make it in. So check out The Canon with new episodes every Monday. Listen on Wolf Pop, Howl, or your favorite podcast app. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ockerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 